a platform that is being held as a climax of activities that we have conducted under the Boys Project for a period of one year. For the one year, we are glad to have associated with uh, SEDU's work, the outreach, the communication, the engagement, the participation, and above all now, the culmination of the National Consensus Meeting. of the National Youth Council is a monolithic youth organization run by the state as a conveyor belt for controlling the youth. It is an instrument of control, not an instrument of empowerment. Some of you are getting this wrong. Leadership is functional, not position. I have heard you talking about amending the National Youth Council Act. This act has been amended twice, like you had uh, during the presentation, in 2003 and in 2010. What has it helped us? A country that, that does not invest in, you, in its youth is as bad as, I don't know, it is doomed. So let us discuss how parliament should appropriate its resources equally to the National Youth Council. I want also to emphasize that as we are talking today as young people, let us also take this government. We need councils to be funded. You see, there is a word called Saudi Zanawinch. Saudi and Ngombe Zanawinch are different. Ngombe is just noise, but Saudi is the voice. Who is listening to the voices of the, of the young people in this country? We are the majority, no one can step on us. We are not stopping and we need to continue moving forward. We need to be disruptive of the status quo. We need to be extremely uncomfortable with what is happening currently so that we can be able to think further and deeper and more creatively on how we can engage and how we can change the status quo. If I speak as a person who was one of the architects of this affirmative action thing, I want to say that the sooner it ends, the better for Uganda. We really need to have persons with disabilities at all levels because there is nothing for us without us. A poor man is not given voice in the community. Now when you talk of empowerment, let us start from the economic point of view also. If you cannot facilitate a meeting of a few people, how are you going to manage to run around the entire constituency and facilitate teams? As much as we are pushing for reforms in this act, we also need to push those people who have the power to dictate what these young people are receiving. We should empower the youth in villages to vote for the objective leaders at those village youth councils. Democracy cannot deliver for its citizens when another fraction of its citizens is underrepresented. The young people should be able to assert themselves. I know that they will fight for political positions. If the government of Uganda is failing to support a few UDMPs who are happy. But if we have many UDMPs in parliament, will it be possible? But I want to say that if you are not careful, there could be structures or spaces for you being participated. <laughs> not participating, but being participated. The biggest disease affecting the young people is tokenism. Very few young people can stand here and talk independently. Most of them come here as agents of their masters. Democracy, as I know it, cannot obtain well in a society where there's ignorance and poverty. And some people want you to be in that state. My difference with many of the views you have is this whole idea of particular representation in what we generally refer to as Mine is only that the voice is good, but the action is needed. So one of the things that Yanko have been able to emphasize in this meeting is that the biggest problem in the youth 
leadership is not an electoral college, but we just have to make sure that we mold the electoral college system of voting and empower the youth council structures. So on that note, I wanted to actually change the title of this project. It is now the Bozi Leo. I want to change it into the Bozi Nyanya. Mind it, Okay, the Bozi 